Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Classroom Hacks YouTube channel and welcome back to another splendid book review for the Classroom Hacks review of Stephen Fry's Troy. And as always, before we get into this review, we'd like to remind you that we are live from the Pantheon of Pedagogy, the Mecca of Methodology, your vacation from vacation, sneaking into those earbuds via a Trojan horse where you can learn to seriously take teaching not so seriously. This is and we are Classroom Hacks. And welcome back again, everyone. We truly hope that you have been enjoying these book reviews as much as we've enjoyed reviewing them. And we continue into this year with another fantastic book. As I've said before on previous reviews, I am a huge fan of Stephen Fry's work, his readings, uh, his uh, raconteur ability to tell a story, to write a story, to bring history to life. And if I can't recommend anything enough, it would be the works that he's covered in terms of mythos, heroes, and anything he's read in terms of his Sherlock Holmes pieces, I would highly recommend you going out there and having a listen as history is retold anew. Sherlock Holmes is brought to you in a new way that is just completely captivating. And again, he has managed to provide us with some splendid listening in the form of Troy. Now, when I first found out that he was covering Troy, I thought, well, one, since it's Stephen Fry, and I, like I said, I'm a huge mark and a fan for his work, I was going to listen to it no matter what, and I wasn't necessarily sure how much he was going to get out of just covering Troy itself. Obviously, I know that it is a, an extremely historic and renowned uh, time and piece that has been covered in a variety of different movies and films and uh, documentaries and whatnot, but it is something that I think once uh, he kind of knew that Homer and the Iliad were there to sort of address the discussion of Troy, I think Fry wanted to take his own shot at it, and I'm glad he did because this turned out to be one fantastic listen. And as always, before we get into our own synopsis and observations, here is a summary of the piece Troy from Goodreads. The story of Troy speaks to all of us. The kidnapping of Helen, a queen celebrated for her beauty, sees the Greeks launch a thousand ships against the city of Troy, to which they will lay siege for ten whole years. It is a terrible war with casualties on all sides, as well as strained relations between allies whose consequences become tragedies. In Troy, you will find heroism and hatred, love and loss, revenge and regret, desire and despair. It is these human passions written bloodily in the sands of a distant shore that still speak to us today. And that is really very much the surface level read uh, from Goodreads in regards to Troy. As I've said before, Fry uh, definitely does an extremely deep dive into many different aspects of these historical accounts. As I said before with um, Neil Gaiman's piece on Norse mythology, Gaiman does an excellent job in sort of addressing some of the uh, background and context for many of those characters and many of those uh, mythological legends. But Fry is on a completely different level. Uh, there are even some parts in the narration where he even puts aside, takes the audience aside, and even apologizes for going so deep into the weeds. If you are a fan of that, which I am, because I love to hear as much backstory and lineage and everything that can get tied into that as possible, that is something that you'll truly enjoy because he really does an excellent job in connecting all the dots, obviously referencing different parts of heroes and mythos. And even if you haven't read or listened to those particular pieces, he does a good job of catching you up here with Troy. And in terms of our observations here at Classroom Hacks, I'm a fan of deep diving into history, myth, and gossip, as I've stated before, and Fry really wraps that all nicely together like a fine, ugly Christmas sweater, but ugly in the sense of you want to be engulfed in it. Fry interweaves beautifully between storytelling, logistical breakdown, and character persona to bring the story of Troy to life in a variety of levels. 
For example, when discussing the Nair siege, he describes the events as more plunder than thunder, as he details the development of the society around Troy and the weighing voices of generals, seers, gods, and even Achilles. And so this is a more specific example of when I say Fry goes into the weeds, he really talks about a lot of things that we oftentimes don't consider. So, for example, the city of Troy was laid to siege for nine years. And you might ask yourselves, well, what exactly happened in those nine years? And it was one of those things where the logistics of many of these things, Fry really breaks down. He talks about the development of the city towns around on the siege part of the banks of uh, the beach outside of Troy. He talks about the different things that are going on in terms of the soldiers and Achilles and Agamemnon and the different sort of politics that are going on between Odysseus and his scheming. And so you get to see a lot of the interworkings. It's as if you watch an entire uh, season's worth, two, three seasons worth of Game of Thrones all thrown into this uh, particular book because you get all the backstory, you get all the discussion points, and you get all the gossip and background noise that oftentimes you don't get to see behind the curtain with, and Fry really brings that to life here. Fry continued his journey from Mythos and Heroes to take on the ancient and legendary city of Troy. As with the previous installments, we get a deep and hearty backstory pertaining to key contributors such as Paris, Agamemnon, Achilles, and Helen, and of course, our favorite gods. No, not those gods. These gods. The Greek gods. Fry's storytelling is superb. His documentary narration is captivating, and his depth of information and insight is bountiful. He envelops the characters and brings them to life. Like I said before, the logistics of battles, armies, armadas, and civilizations are explored, and no stone is seemingly unturned. Uh, and as I said before, there are times when Fry apologizes for the amount of backstory and side story that he goes into, but I don't complain about that. I really enjoy him really making a lot of those connections, telling the backstories to characters uh, that are um, involved in main characters' lives. So you get a lot of the, the parents of parents and how certain characters came to be and how their strengths were sort of... Uh, gathered and accumulated and how their ancestry impacts the sort of layout of what ultimately happens with Troy. And why that's significant is because once we get to the Battle of Troy without giving out any too many spoilers, uh, if you haven't ever seen any of the movies, ever read any of Homer's stuff, have not uh, had any inkling of what happens in Troy, but we get a breakdown essentially of how these sort of relationships between humans, mankind, and the gods sort of play out because even gods have their favorites and so they run interference here and there. But when we see some of the lineage and the way the backstories connect, everything ties together. It, it all comes together very well. And if you are a fan of dynasties and gigantic family trees, you will appreciate the effort that Fry puts into this. And so, as I said before, when he sort of breaks this down, we get this sort of background from a lot of the lead up into some of these main characters, primarily Paris and Agamemnon, and then Helen being kidnapped. And then obviously Achilles gets a lot of attention in regards to his contribution to the overall uh, playing out of this. But I think there's a lot of other characters that uh, Fry really brings to life that add levity and just a deeper sort of appreciation for some of the, the the folly that go into not just war, but into the, the ancient Greek storytelling. So one primary example that I just thought was just superbly done, hilarious, but also an intricate part of this sort of uh, multitude of dynamics that are going on here is the character of Cassandra and how she uh, she was plagued with the unfortunate curse of uh, getting to foresee the future, but being cursed in the sense that no one will ever believe her. So there's a variety of different times throughout the story where she sort of interrupts 
and proclaims that death is coming the city will burn don't listen to him this is how we're going to die and then fry just immediately digresses to another character just completely uh, dismissing her and going on to another subject and it's just such a uh, unique and fascinating and wonderfully incorporated uh, character to sort of invest in and then you sort of see how many of these other personalities sort of blossom around that but that's just one example that I thought was uh, truly well done and as I said before Fry is just so good with really making each character and giving each character their own personality he doesn't just read the story he brings Troy to life he brings each character to life every character's quirk every character's strength every character's weakness and flaw it's like watching a master at work that has really taken the time to get to know his people as Matthew McConaughey would say who is my man he gets to know each and every one of these characters and he says this is who they were and this is how they acted and this is exactly what you can expect uh, if you were to have interacted with them during this time in terms of how I would use this particular piece in class one thing that Fry does excellent work with is referencing his material he not only gives you this sort of information in the appendix at the end of the piece but he establishes how his particular understanding of a situation sort of played out as he references Homer and he even references the movie Troy and he references uh, different individuals throughout history who have covered uh, the ancient Greek city and then breaking that down with looking at the different ages uh, like the Bronze Age and then talking about how certain things came to be and our own understanding of how these things sort of worked. He then traces the sort of issues that have happened in Troy and he connects them to modern times. And so using this in class, obviously, as I've said before, I teach an English class. So understanding where reference points come from, utilizing source material, giving credit where credit is due, properly citing our sources, and then trying to find threads that are universal or timeless and using them in a modern setting. Fry does all of this and he does it extremely well. And this is the way I would apply it to class. And as I've said before, this is one of those things where this is how I wish history was told or taught because it's such a engaging and interactive sort of dynamic. I could have sat back and just listened to this for the 10, 11 hours straight, however long it was, and just been completely captivated by it. So I know I'm probably biased because I am a fan of Stephen Fry, but this was definitely another great contender for book and review of the year so far in terms of just the historical and entertainment purposes. This was just completely enveloping and completely engrossing. So five out of five, a highly recommended read for all of you or listen as I would as I've been listening. And like I said, with books by Matthew McConaughey and Stephen Fry and uh, Neil Gaiman, those are ones that I have to listen to because I need to get the full enclosure of those personalities and those voices coming through to me and just making my earbuds uh, melt with uh, pleasure in terms of getting to hear them and their renditions of things. So I hope you appreciated this review for Stephen Fry's Troy. Next time when we come back for our next review, we kind of switch gears as we get to a more uh, cultural and pedagogical sort of discussion as we will cover the coddling of the American mind. And this is one that I've been wanting to get to for a while. And this is going to be an interesting sort of switch of gears as a lot of my own personal observations and personal history with what I've seen and how uh, campuses and universities and schools and community colleges and just our own progress and progression have been sort of developing and branching out in a variety of different directions. So this was one read that I really looked forward to, and this is one that I'm really going to look forward to reviewing. So until next time, fellow hacks, I hope these reviews have given you some sort of entertainment and insight, and I do hope that they are able to help you in your class if you need to use them at any point. So as always, it's never goodbye. It's until we meet again. So long and a Vita Zen, fellow hacks.